Hi everyone, uh, I'm Nick Lippis uh, from the Lippis Report and also the co-chair of the Open Networking User Group. Uh, and I'm here today uh, after reviewing Arista's 7500E series uh, to give you my thoughts uh, on it. So um, I have three basic um, observations from the 7500. Uh, one is that uh, it really talks to around the performance and the density uh, and also the power consumption. Since we've tested well over 30 different switches over at uh, Ixia's iSIM City, I think I can reputably say that I'm a, pretty much of an expert like in the uh, evaluation of Ethernet switching. And when I look at the 7500, it is off the charts um, on a couple of different dimensions. First, in terms of its, its overall performance in terms of layer two and layer three uh, forwarding. It has the largest buffering that I've ever seen in any kind of switch before, which is really good when you want to support a wide variety and diversity of different kinds of traffic patterns. The other thing, and this goes you know, pretty quick when you notice it, um, is the density. And there is both physical density and there is also virtual density. So on the physical density, 288 40 gigabit ethernet ports, 1,152 10 gigabit ethernet ports, and 96 100 gigabit ethernet ports, all within one chassis. What's really interesting about this is that it's fileless has the integrated optics within it as well, which really cuts down overall cost of these kinds of devices um, in terms of transceivers and connecting optics within them. So on the overall density, it's huge. And then also when you start looking at the size of the tables that it supports in terms of MAC tables and IP address entries, the number of virtual machines that it supports is off the charts as well. So there is huge scale here and what that really means is that the number of servers that can be configured and connected into these kinds of devices or into this device, it will, will really scale between 100 and to about 100,000. So huge scale there. Now also there's usually a penalty that you pay in terms of performance consumption and what when I look at the overall specs of this, what I'm seeing is around four watts per 10 gigabit ethernet port. Now that's the lowest that I've ever seen. Um, and obviously we'd have to test it to make sure like that is what it says. But the bottom line at four watts per 10 gigabit port, that's basically less power consumption than a light bulb on a Christmas tree. So um, we have amazing performance, very hyperscale in terms of its physical and logical network. And then also we have power consumption that would be the lowest uh, within the industry. So the second area that I wanted to um, give you my observation on was its economics. So if you just look at things on a price per port basis, um, for 10 gigabit ethernet at about $600 per port, uh, that's about half of what uh, it is today. So we have a new record around uh, the economics of these devices. Uh, the second is around 40 gigabit ethernet. So at around $2,200 per 40 gigabit ethernet port, that's also a new record. And at 100 gigabit ethernet, that's $10,000, that too is a record. So we have the lowest price points in the industry and the highest scale in the industry and the lowest power consumption. So you really have to do hats off to Arista Engineering. They've done a really great job uh, with this device. So now, all right, so that is the box and that's its attributes. Uh, now what about how do you design data centers with this, especially cloud scale data centers with them? And I think there's a couple of things that come to mind is that with that kind of port density, you could really have a one-tier or two-tier architecture. Uh, a one-tier architecture basically using MLAG, so you have kind of layer two uh, lags between servers and the top of rack switches for redundancy, and you can scale that up pretty well. You can also then go to ECMP, uh, so kind of layer three, and so you can have uh, another uh, level of scale and also reliability and redundancy. And then the third area is for highly virtualized data centers. Uh, you can also now have ECMP and then you have VXLAN uh, tunnels on top of that. So you have kind of layer two tunneled into layer three and you have one switching fabric that supports all three of those different kinds of designs. Now, as I mentioned before, you can either have um, a one tier or two tier. So in the two tier, you'd have a leaf and spine kind of architecture with a three to one over subscription, which is very normal today. Uh, and then you can scale that up between say 100 servers up to about 100,000 servers. And then when you think about the load on top of this, there's a huge amount of buffer capacity that's built within the switch. So it can support big data applications, Hadoop applications, highly virtualized data centers. There's a lot of uh, SDN hooks and capabilities within the fabric as well. So it supports a wide range of differing, different kinds of requirements for applications, even including high performance trading where you have really low latency requirements as well. 
So I think if when you factor in all of these things, there's the, the box attributes, the economics, and then also now the new design options that are afforded by the 7500 E-Series. Uh, I think Arista did an amazing job here, and I anticipate they're going to get a very warm welcome from the marketplace, uh, especially as companies really look for cloud-scale deployment. Thank you all so much for watching.